Bookworms, and welcome back to My Sisters TBR. I'm Stacy, And I'm Rebecca. We're your book-obsessed sisters, back with yet another episode. Can you believe it's already the end of April? This month has absolutely <laughs> flew by. Insane. But time flies when we're getting lost in all of these pages. Uh, <laughs> we've got a stacked recap for you today, plus a deep dive into a seriously swoon or the romance mm. ah. oh get ready as we dish all things the duke and i by julia quinn the book that launched a thousand bridgerton fans maybe more than a thousand i'm thinking you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thousands <laughs> plural <laughs> but before all the dukes and drama let's rewind to those april reads what gems did we uncover i'm so ready to spill the tea <laughs> pour it up pour it up <laughs> okay so i i've already told you rebecca that i've read uh nine books this month that's a you're back on the ball <laughs> listen don't say that because five <laughs> of those books were done in the first like four days of april and then it just really tapered off again so i had like a week okay. of like really you know, nose to the pages or nose to the Kindle or ears to the audible, whatever. <laughs> but, but yeah, the, the first yep. week like really started out strong. Um, they were all like my arc, like books that I was oh, reading, yes. advanced reader copy. Um, so like I really got into that strong and then I was getting declined for a lot of books that I oh. wanted to read so I got like really upset I I'm sad. sad I'm very sad but um but I will you know try to get more more books but anyways yeah so after that I just sort of went downhill again because I started reading uh the book club book which I'll get into after but I that kind of put a damper on my you know, quick reading because I was, because I was just finding it was kind of a different book than what I was used to. So, mm, gotcha. so that, that, yeah, yeah, that hurt. Yeah. Say no more. Understood. Yeah. We know what happens when we branch <laughs> off and go down roads that aren't well traveled for us, <laughs> i.e. the smutty romance books. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Lessons learned. Mm-hmm. So how many books did you read in April? I read four. Oh, okay. That is really good considering we didn't think that you were going to read very much due to how much traveling you were going to be doing and people the seeing. The fact that, yeah, the fact that I just spent three weeks on, I say vacation, but like on holidays. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I just spent three weeks away from my apartment so like i wasn't expecting to yeah. i was expecting only to be able to read the featured read mm -hmm. but mm -mm. good job thanks <laughs> <laughs> man you guys are all um, missing out on our random <laughs> dance moves and like our hand movements and stuff we really need to be recording like all of these episodes <laughs> yes uh, oh god okay Give us your first one. Okay. So oddly enough, this was a book that uh, was very different uh, than our usual, but it didn't put me in a slump. Okay. Oh. Uh-huh. So uh, this was All Systems Read by Martha Wells. It's the first book in the Murderbot Diaries. Uh, so this is a sci-fi novella. It's only 144 pages. Uh, I listened to the audiobook for this, which I highly, highly recommend. Now, no doubt, like the whole book is great to be read physical as well or ebook, but I just really enjoyed the audiobook because I could picture it. Like, I, I don't know, it is just so well done. And the there is a little bit of comedy in it. So hearing that, 
as mm-hmm. words. I don't. It's really interesting. Oh. Okay. I love so that. I rated this four stars. This was really good. Probably even closer to four and a half stars because I enjoyed the hell out of this book. Damn. Um, yeah. So the description as a heartless killing machine, I was a complete failure. In a corporate dominated spacefaring future, planetary missions must be approved and supplied by the company. For their own safety, exploratory ter- teams are accompanied by company-supplied security androids. But in a society where contracts are awarded to the lowest bidder, safety isn't a primary concern. On a distant planet, a team of scientists is conducting surface tests. Shadowed by their company-supplied droid, self-aware sec unit that has hacked its own governor module and refers to itself, though never out loud, as Murderbot... Scornful of humans, Murderbot wants to be left alone long enough to figure out who it is. But when a neighboring mission goes dark, it's up to the scientists and Murderbot to get to the truth. So this is written from in like okay. artificial intelligent, like robot. He's kind of like, yeah, he's kind of like human-ish, like parts, but uh, an android. And mm. he's, like, so self-aware and just, I don't think he means to be funny, but it does, it is funny. And, like, he spends his time watching this, like, show. And this is basically what he's concerned about is finishing this show. Like, he doesn't want to do anything. Like, he does. Like he just wants to <laughs> go offline and just watch his show. And I'm just like, okay, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Felt. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just one little quote, like, I'm not going to do this for all the books that I'll read. Um, but I did really like was, uh, (laughs) going, you know, off of what I just said about him watching the show. Uh, he says, I liked the imaginary people on the entertainment feed way more than I liked real ones, but you can't have one without the other. (laughs) Don't we all? We all like fictional characters more than real characters. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so yeah that was a fun quick read just to start off the month it was great you started off the month very well yes and I was so proud of myself for like taking this book that I knew I would like and I put off for a while mm-hmm. Chris read it a while ago and he said like I really think that you're gonna like this because there's absolutely like no romance in it it's just sci-fi but mm. I did it I mm. listened to it and I enjoyed the it. hell out of it <laughs> I did it I love that. Yeah. Okay. The next one that I read was an arc. And again, this was... A, I, okay. I don't know what's going on with me, but this month, obviously, I was really getting into different medias, different genres. But um, okay. I... Yeah. So this is Crave by Maria Lovett. This was a graphic novel. It was only 176 oh. pages, so it was really quick. I read it in one sitting. Um, the art was just so beautiful. Okay. But it's an erotica. Kind of oh. sci-fi-ish. Okay. Romance. Okay. And there's pictures. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's on our intrigued. net galley if you want to read it. <laughs> okay. Um. But the picture, I have to admit, like, the the cover art did throw me off a little bit. It felt like it it didn't really suit the graphic novel, I'll say. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it is kind of – also, I, I don't think I mentioned it, but it's kind of thriller as well. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, I rated this a four Whoa. out of five. Another one that I really – yeah, erotic thriller. Like, that just – That's just intriguing, right? Sign me up. <laughs> Okay, so the synopsis. It's coined as Black Mirror meets Eyes Wide Shut. So this erotic thriller explores how we connect to the world and to others in the dawn of AI. Crave, a mysterious app that promises to make your desires come true, spreads among the students of an elite university who use it as a hookup app. So these, like, they just wake up one day and this app is on everybody's phone. It's kind of like that time that you two dropped that weird, like, album... And it just ended up on everybody's iPod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Memory unlocked. 
Um, so yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so the story follows top student David as he engages in a game of seduction with the unattainable Alexandra. However, the app escalates and wreaks havoc on campus. It's up to David and his friends to stop the spiral and to find out what really lies behind Crave. Okay. What the hell? This had me on the edge of my seat the whole novel. It was super quick, like I said. Read it in like one sitting and it truly leaves you wanting more. Especially like considering where... We're living in a world now that AI is just everywhere. Like, everywhere you look is AI-generated pictures. It's AI-generated novels. It's generated everything. Ads you see are AI-generated. The idea that AI is becoming such an integrated part of our everyday is is scary. Like, many Mm -hmm. times throughout this, I just stop and think, geez, like, it's scary how realistic some of the scenes like this feels like it could happen oh my god yes. so marie lovett does a wonderful job at integrating the side characters of the story and leading them all to the one pivotal part in the storyline um like there were small details that you can pick up from the images which were so beautifully done that i found myself just looking at things in the background like numerous times like certain scenes there were things that like i would just zone in on and just it was just so interesting how it changed from scene to scene uh like at mm. one point one of the characters changes his shirt and it was just such an interesting little detail that was added that made sense in the story, but the words weren't there. It's just something that you picked up from seeing it visually. And I just, I thought that was awesome. I was really like hesitant going into it because, you know, I like, I like reading my spicy romance, right? So this felt like it was going to be a totally different ball game. Um, but uh, yeah, I was really surprised. That's so different. Oh my god. Yeah, like I was kind of afraid that um, it was going to feel too like like pornographic. Like I was kind of afraid that, yeah. um, like especially the visual of it, not reading it, the visual of it. Mm-hmm. But it was so well done. The scenes were placed in important parts of the storyline. Like it wasn't just like smack there just to have Damn. it there, right? <sighs> yeah, like it yeah. it made sense in the story. But yeah, um, I only docked one star and I think it was just like my own preference. Like the pacing was great, but I just wish that there was more. Like I felt like mm. like there could have been a lot more in between the beginning and the end. It just felt very yeah. straightforward. But yeah, I thought it was just a really great, great read. And I highly recommend it. Um, it is kind of sci-fi-ish in a sense, but really looking back on it, not really because it could very easily be our current yeah. time yeah very true uh but check um yeah i i know like we don't really need to say it because everybody should know but i'm gonna say it anyways check the trigger warnings on this one because there is on page um suicide attempts mm, so that yeah. could hit gotcha. you know like there are some dark themes so but yeah so highly recommend yeah what was yours um so my first read of the month was girl abroad by l kennedy i'm so excited to hear you talk about this one (laughs) oh my god oh my god loved it okay so this was 432 pages contemporary romance Mm -hmm. um i rated this four stars Oh, I only docked the one star because there was some miscommunication. Oh, Just I think speak. we surmised that like when we first talked about the book, I think we felt like there was going to be miscommunication, yeah. but okay. All right. Synopsis. When 19 year old Abby Bly gets the opportunity to study abroad for a year in London, it's the perfect chance to finally slip out from under the thumb of her beloved but overbearing retired rock star father. She's ready to be free to discover herself, but first off to meet the girls she's rooming with. That is until she arrives at her gorgeous new flat to discover those roommates are actually all boys. 
charming, funny, insufferably attractive boys and off limits with a rule against fraternizing between housemates after unwanted drama with the previous girl. Abby has never considered herself a rule breaker, but soon she's lying to her father about her living situation and falling for not one, but two men she can't have, her rugby player roommate and a broody musician with a girlfriend. Not to mention, her research for school has gotten her tangled in a deeply hidden scandal of a high nobility family surrounding her in secrets on all sides. If there's any hope for Abby finding love, answers, or a future in London, she'll have to decide which rules and hearts might be worth breaking. <sighs> oh, it sounds so good. I cannot wait to read it. <laughs> like, oh my god. Like, the personality in all of the characters, she has so much humor, and I love her. Oh, my God. The relationships that she has with her roommates, and, like, not just not just romantic, but platonic as well. And it's so refreshing reading it. Oh, my God. I was obsessed. Couldn't put uh, it down. Have um, you read anything else by L. Kennedy? Because I really think that you would like her other series as well. She has a good hockey series. No, but I have heard of so many of these. Mm -hmm. So many. And I've been meaning to read them. And I keep forgetting. Maybe we'll have to do an L month. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. So, the only quote that I saved that like really really stood out to me a lot felt like such a connection with this book with her mm -hmm. because like she also went away and like i don't know with me moving away too and like yeah trying to like find myself and shit you know so i was just like ugh, like i feel such a connection with this book but <laughs> the very last page okay when i take stock of this last year it still feels improbable that i arrived to where i am now that a guy I was never supposed to meet would become such a vital part of my existence and the person I'm beginning to understand myself to be. Those are the happy accidents, I suppose. The twists of fate that conspire to trouble us, break us, and then fortify us, make us stronger at the seams. For so long, I thought what I wanted were stories of adventure and exploration, but what I needed was to find myself in the quiet moments, to find contentment in myself when I'm alone with my thoughts and there's nowhere else to hide. It was the only way I could truly understand my heart and bring myself around to where I was always meant to be. Fall in love with your solitude. Hell yeah. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, like, oh yeah. my God. I love that so much. <sighs> Honestly, like there were moments where I was laughing, like, oh my God. Highly, highly, highly highly recommend it awesome i can't wait to read it yeah uh, i think that might be one of my next coming up you should you are gonna float through it i have to finish a court of silver flames first before ilsa disowns me i started reading that again too i'm like so much further now than what i was oh my god i gotta yeah i gotta find where i was so what did you read next okay I read The Stand-In by Lily Chu. Um, I started this a very long time ago on Audible. Hmm. My Audible, I, I canceled my subscription for it because I just didn't find it was worth it at the time. So I restarted that because I got a few months for 99 cents or something like that. Um, so I started this one back up again. Totally forgot everything of what I had listened to previous. So I had to start all over again. But anyways, um, mm -hmm. it was pretty good. Uh, I rated it three. Oh. A contemporary romance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I cannot tell you how many pages it is because I'm not looking at it. <laughs> I'm looking okay. at the audio book, which was 10 hours and 55 minutes. So whatever that okay. works out to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the description on this one is Gracie Reed is doing just fine. Sure, she was fired by her overly friendly boss. And yes, she still hasn't gotten her mother into the nursing home over their dreams, but she's healthy. She's somewhat happy and she's mostly holding it all together. But when a mysterious SUV pulls up beside her, revealing Chinese cinema's golden couple, Wei Fengli and Sam Yao, 
Gracie's world is turned on its head. The famous actress has a proposition. Due to their uncanny resemblance, Fang Li wants Gracie to be her stand-in. The catch? Gracie will have to be escorted by Sam, the most attractive and infuriating man Gracie's ever met. If, if it means getting the money she needs for her mother, Gracie's in. Soon, Gracie moves into a world of luxury she never knew existed, but resisting Sam and playing the role of an elegant movie star proves more difficult than she ever imagined, especially when she learns the real reason Feng Li so desperately needs her help. In the end, all of the lists in the world won't be able to help Gracie keep up with this elaborate ruse without losing herself and her heart. Um, okay, Lizzie McGuire. That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was really good. I mean, she, the characters just like really, I'll, I'll say jumped off the page, but you know what I mean? Like jumped out of my yep, earbuds. Of the... I don't know. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. <laughs> it just, there were times it felt sloppy. I still highly recommend people to read it. Just, just don't go into it looking for a like masterpiece. Like it's, it's entertaining mm-hmm. Um, not really spicy, was a little on the sad side with her mother, but Mm -hmm. there was some interesting, like, twists a bit. Um, overall, not super memorable. I'll put it that way. But it was entertaining to listen to while I was working. Okay, interesting. But yeah, it was very cute. I think I would still read other books that Lily Chu has wrote. So that's not saying anything bad about it. Just wasn't as memorable as the other books that I've read this month, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you started out with Pretty some strong. very good books. So, yeah. 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 But so is this the one that put you in a bit of a slump? No. No. Okay. Hey. No. Not yet. A win is a win. <laughs> yeah. It is. <laughs> I I hate like comparing but i mean that's what we do here but it yeah this book pales in comparison to the next one that i listened to all right give it to us go go on to the next one Come uh, on. okay this is another arc and i have never been so happy to read something early in my entire life and oh i honest to god wanted to just replay it again after i listened to it because this one was an audiobook as well uh five stars oh yeah yeah this was not another love song by julie soto oh my god so the characters in forget me not do make an appearance in not another love song but they're standalone like you can still read it without it okay um this was a contemporary romance It was only 384 pages, so it was a fairly quick read. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just love everything about this book. The cover is what, like, really dragged me in. I adore her cover pictures because they're not, like, that cutesy cartoon. It's almost more of, like, an anime style, like... Oh. You see what I mean? Oh, I love that. Yes. It is beautiful. Okay. Gwen Jackson and Xander Thorne are both musical prodigies, but each has had very different paths to success. Xander was born into classical music royalty, while Gwen had a natural ear for music that was nurtured by a kind shop owner. After Gwen performs at his friend's wedding, she's mortified when she realizes Xander has no clue who she is despite having worked together for a year at the Pops Orchestra. But she's more furious that he arrogantly critiques her performance. When Gwen is offered the role of first chair of the orchestra, something Xander has secretly coveted for years, their existing hostility goes up a notch. But their respect for each other's music is undeniable and their on-stage chemistry is off the scale. As they begin to explore their feelings for one another, suddenly their box office dynamite and the fragile romance that's growing between them is in danger of being crushed beneath a publicity stunt. (sighs) (laughs) This was a freaking symphony. Like, perfection. Perfection. 
Um, oh my god. Yes. Her writing is just so vibrant and nuanced as like a perfectly executed concerto. Um, making this a true standout in the world of music themed romances. So this brought to light the competitive side of like classical music and orchestras. I don't know how much has been embellished because obviously I have no idea about classical music orchestras. Same. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but it just, it felt real. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually like that in real life, but it sure as hell felt real. Like, I have, like, limited musical background, but a musical background anyways. Um, mm-hmm. So there was a lot of this attention to detail that I did pick up on and, like, a lot of musical phrases that I picked up on that just made it feel more real. Oh, um, oh I love Yeah. That. Like, the descriptions of the rehearsals... Um, like the pressure of performance and just the dynamics of an orchestra, like together as a band, it just, oh, it just, I don't know, scratched a part of my brain that I had no idea yeah. still existed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so at like the heart of the story, it's an electrifying rivalry between Gwen Jackson and Xander Thorne. So Gwen's, like I said in the description, she's self-taught, um, fierce determination, while Xander has, like, an inherited privilege and mm-hmm. he, so he has that, like, arrogance of a kind of, like, I was born into this role, I'm, right? Yeah. Whereas hers is total, like, like, she fought for this, right? But their chemistry is just, oh, oh my god. Like, I just rooted for them right from the very first meeting, and it's not the best meeting, so it goes to show how much, like, electricity they generated. Yeah. Um, oh, God, I love that. Yeah. But, obviously, like, Soto's greatest talent, I think, was really making characters that just jumped off the page. Because reading these characters just made me feel like like they were my friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I love books that do that. But, like, they are they were so real. Like, they all had their own flaws, their own triumphs, and it just really drew you into not only Gwen and Xander's story, but the, like, supporting characters. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I guess, like, if you're into, like, the whole spoon-worthy romance and, like, the rivalry to lovers and <laughs> the banter and, like, just the tension... Dash in a little bit of the musical <gasps> side of it all. It's just, it was, it was a masterpiece. I cannot rave enough about this book. And there is, there is a scene, a scene that will live rent free in my brain for as long as I live. Oh, good God. Okay. Adding to the TBR right there. Do it. And Do it. Right because they're there. honest to God. Done. Added. Yeah. Say no more. <laughs> it just is like core memory. Uh, so I did, I do have a favorite quote that uh, I probably shouldn't read if mom is going to listen to this. So mom, just plug your ears for a few minutes. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> it's not that bad. But so I want to be clear, he whispered as he focused on the rose colored smudges around her lips. I want you in every way. She swallowed, and he watched her throat move. I want to see you, and fuck you, and play music with you. Oh my god. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh my god. Yep. Yeah. Oh, like, and that's not even... I love reading. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't even, like, the best, the best part. That was just one of the, one of the... That I really liked because Delicious. he was just so raw and honest and oh, yeah. We love a man who speaks his mind. Yes. What do you have next? So. <laughs> oh God. Okay. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> so at my hair appointment, 
Ilsa was telling me to read Your Dad Will Do by <laughs> Katie Robert. <laughs> yep. Of course. Of course I did. Did you read okay. it or listen to it? I listened. <laughs> I listened. So, actually, it's funny because, like, I don't know what's going on with me lately, but I literally, <laughs> uh, um, I listened to that, and then immediately after, I read Older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite the combination. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so Your Dad Will Do. It's only 150 pages. I listened to the audiobook during my drive to St. John's. Mm. Like, literally. It's very quick. Just very quick. Yeah. <laughs> I rated this. I rated it four. Mm-hmm. Like, really, really good for just smut. Yes. Not a whole lot of story to it. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Good lord. Okay. <clears throat> Synopsis. I've been harboring a dark secret for two long years. I've been fantasizing about my fiancé's father, thinking filthy thoughts that a good daughter-in-law should not be indulging in. So when I catch my fiancé cheating on me, there's only one revenge that will fulfill all my needs. I'm going to seduce his father. It's dirty and it's wrong and I don't care. I want him. So, I mean, to have him. After this weekend, my ex won't be the only one who calls his father daddy. <laughs> so, in saying that, for one, I didn't even read this synopsis before I dove no. first into it. I think it's pretty obvious, the though, title, what it... <laughs> yeah. Title is enough. That yeah, you don't, you don't need any more. <laughs> nope. But the end of that was... One of my, like, my highlighted, like, favorite quote is she says to him, you aren't the only one who calls him daddy now. Like, she says that to him, to her <laughs> ex-fiance. Oh, I love it so much. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, Spice was 10 out of 5. <laughs> every, if I were to read this, I would imagine that every single page turn had something. There was a sex scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I have no words at all. Just delicious. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I haven't finished uh, it. I started the audiobook as well while I was at work, and I said, nope, can't do this one at work. <laughs> So I shut it off, and I didn't go back to it yet. (laughs) Oh. Yeah. It's one of those books that, like, I was very nervous that if I walked too close to somebody, they could hear it coming out of my earbud. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. I. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Oh, like go get it girl go get it hell yeah i wish (laughs) that one of the men who cheated on me had an attractive father because that is exactly what i would have done (laughs) i (laughs) would (laughs) have we would have been cheering you on (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh but yeah amazing if you're just looking for something down and dirty quick yeah i just find with like shorter stories like that like i struggle being able to give out a five star rating you know yeah i can understand that because you don't really get i I don't know we've said this so many times on the podcast but shorter books you don't get to really make the connection with the characters yeah that i feel we need for our five stars because i think you're in a similar Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. But four. Like, very shiny 
a shiny, shiny four star. Four. Yes. Do you think um, um, you would have rated it the same if you read it versus listening to it? So that's another thing. I was like trying to imagine that as well. I don't know, honestly, because it was interesting hearing it, but maybe... Maybe I would have been able to rate it higher if I was just reading it because then Mm -hmm. I'm putting, you're going to imagine things differently when you're reading Mm -hmm. it compared to when you're listening to it. Yeah. Maybe I would have been able to, in between all of the lines, been able to fill in more thicker plots, you know? I think you probably would have taken longer reading it. Mm. So you would have spent more time with the book, I think. Very, very true. Yeah, because that only took three and a half hours, maybe. Yeah. Because I didn't start it until I got to Gander. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so I was finished by the time I got to St. John's then. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, maybe if I read it. Okay. Yeah. I'd probably give it (laughs) at least, like, four and a half. (laughs) Still not quite the five star, but but close enough. Close enough. Okay. What was your next read? Uh, okay. So this isn't the book club book, but it is one that, after looking at my read books, is what started my, my slump. Oh, dear. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Um, Dragon Den by Chris Dean. This is a fantasy. Eh. I rated it two and a half. Couldn't give it three. It was a little bit more redeeming than a two but yeah so in wow. dragon den yeah in dragon den marcus Fredericton, with aspirations of becoming a dragon rider shattered finds hope when offered a broken dragon and a mission infiltrate the clan controlling the dragon den suspected of hijacking valuable obsidian laden trucks eager to reclaim his dreams marcus plunges into a dangerous world he's ill prepared for with the added complication of falling for the clan leader's daughter. This action-packed romantic dragon fantasy, reminiscent of The Fast and the Furious, <laughs> is a thrilling ride for fans of Fourth Wing, Sarah J. Moss, and Daniel L. Jensen. Um, so it being, you know, compared to or recommended for fans of Fourth Wing and like Akatar or, you know, whatever... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went into this with really high hopes. So I was expecting it to resemble Fourth Wing. With that description alone was just, okay, yeah. this sounds like a um, modern day, like this current world, Fourth Wing, just with dragons. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. like, I me, mean, they're hijacking Amazing. transport trucks that are transporting, you know, goods, we'll say. Like, that okay. sounds like it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, yeah, I was just so disappointed. The It was very fast-paced, which sometimes, like, I, I read fast-paced books. I like fast-paced. I also like slow burn, but I, I still really like fast-paced, too. Um, but it was so fast to the point that I just did not have a chance to connect with any of the characters. Oh. Or even, like, care about what was happening in the story. Yeah. Um, I feel like maybe if it added like another hundred pages and like maybe how many pages did you say it was? 310 pages. Which is still, but when you're talking about as much that they're going to be talking about, like that description sounds so loaded. Yeah. 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 And that's exactly it. Yeah. Like yeah, 100 more pages, slow it down so you can actually, like, garner a relationship between the characters mm. and the reader. Then that would have made me happier. Yeah. Um, there were some, like, really high points. Uh, the dragons are done well. There is dialogue between the dragons and the writers. And there was, like, this... There was a really, like, moving scene, I'll say, towards the end of it that was really well done. Uh, But the rest of the story was just lacking in any sort of connection or substance. And the romance 
felt it was almost like an insta love but it felt so forced there was absolutely like no chemistry or spark at all Aww. in the romance um yeah so like overall just two and a half i i liked the story i liked where it was going i liked you know the concept of it all but just i it fell so flat so flat missed opportunity there oh very yeah because i'm always searching for that next fourth wing i find mm-hmm. <laughs> and i thought this was gonna gonna be it but it definitely wasn't at all it had so much potential it did yep this was another arc oh yeah my goodness yeah on a ball this one's out June 20th if anybody wants to take a dive oh and try it. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. it for me, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be somebody else's fourth wing True. equivalent. True that. The next book that I read that this was a book club book. This was the one that I said that I was kind of took me a while to read. Uh, the Final mm-hmm. Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I rated it three and a half it was close to a four i mean it was still it was still a good book so like i i'm not saying that it was bad or anything like that's not why it took me a while to read it i just i guess i just wasn't in the mindset for it maybe yeah this is listed as a horror thriller 352 pages in horror movies the final girls are the ones left standing when the credits roll they made it through the worst night of their lives but what happens after like his best-selling novel the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires grady hendrick's latest and fast-paced frightening and wickedly humorous thriller from chainsaws to summer camp slayers the final girl support group pays tribute to the slyly subverts our most popular horror films, movies like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and Scream. Lynette Tarkington is a real-life final girl who survived a massacre. For more than a decade, she's been meeting with five other final girls and their therapist in a support group for those who survived the unthinkable, working to put their lives back together. Then one woman misses a meeting and their worst fears are realized. Someone knows about the group and is determined to rip their lives apart again, piece by piece. But the thing about Final Girls is that no matter how bad the odds, how dark the night, how sharp the knife, they will never, ever give up. So, yeah, like, I love, like, horror, old school slashers. I, I love it. And this, like, promised a, like, fresh twist on Mm -hmm. the horror tropes. Like, what happens to the survivor after the masked villain is gone? The novel delivers a darkly humorous Easter egg laden ride that's more thrilling than terrifying. It's like, they're... Okay. Yeah. So, like, if you're super into horror, you will really enjoy all, like, the clever winks to the iconic films, the slashers throughout the book. But... If you're expecting, like, a bone-chilling scares and, like, the classic horror chills, you're going to be disappointed. Like, that's... I did not find that that was there at all. It definitely leans heavily into the thriller territory, not horror. Mm. So I think that right off the bat had me just sort of, like, put off a bit because I went into this really wanting horror. I wanted to feel scared. And it just... It wasn't, it wasn't there. The concept was unique. I thought that was such a good idea for a book Mm -hmm. from the point of view of these final girls. Um, some of the characters I found that he wrote just fell flat and I didn't really get that connection. They felt kind of underdeveloped. So they were forgettable. That sort of. Um, so like towards the end of the book, I was kind of like, who was this? Like, like oh, what, what was her story happens. again? Yeah. 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 But he does do a very good job at delving into the, uh, trauma that these girls would, would have. Mm-hmm. I thought that was done really well. Like the challenges that they face picking up their life again after, you know, 
it's shattered. Yeah. It's thing. undeniably a fun read. Like, it really was fun. The mystery of who was behind the renewed attacks just kept me guessing. I, there were so many parts throughout the book that I thought that I had it pinned down, that I knew what was going on, and then it just wasn't. Like, it wasn't what I thought mm. it was. Uh, it did feel a little cheesy, but I think that just brings in the, like, 80s horror. I mean, true. Right? Yep. Like, yep, it, definitely. it's cheesy. <laughs> so it did bring that to the story. <laughs> um, I don't know if it was intended, but it did kind of feel like some of the cheesiness uh, like undercut the more serious themes, so I don't know if that was intended uh. or not, but it was it was still great. And uh, my favorite character in the whole book was Fine, the houseplant. Yep, literally a potted plant that Lynette has this connection to. That yeah, at some points has dialogue with interesting yeah but it okay. does like it's it's one of those like quirky details um that's like a symbol of lynette's trauma and her oh, okay you know yeah, yeah her steps towards healing which is yeah. i think was really well done uh my favorite quote dying isn't the important thing it's nothing more than the punctuation mark at the end of your life. It's everything that came before that matters. Punctuation marks, most people skip right over them. They don't even have a sound. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I loved, loved, loved that. Whoa. I love that. <laughs> they don't yes. even have a sound. No. So yeah, that was our book club book for April. Supposed to be horror, but did not feel like horror. Womp womp. Sad. Okay. Read out the next one because I'm dying. <laughs> I need to talk about this. <sighs> you know what? This might be my first five star rating of 2024. I am so happy. I was afraid that you weren't going to rate it high. <laughs> I don't know why. I think I just, I loved it and I wanted you to love it so that we could just gush over it. <laughs> wow. That's impressive. Oh. All right. Let's, let's tell the crowd what it is. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> our next read, because we both read this, uh, is Older by Jennifer Hartman. This Ugh. just came out April 9th. Devoured it. Yes. It took me less than 24 hours. <laughs> That's crazy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was 436 pages, and it is a contemporary romance <laughs> synopsis <laughs> before he discovered my age he uncovered my heart bruised and abused and victim to a loveless household i shimmered with new life the moment he found me drowning my sorrows in a lake beneath the stars a chance encounter an unspoken connection i was smitten he was curious but, as everyone knew, fate could become decidedly cruel. He called me Haley, like the comet. I called him Reed. And my best friend? Well, she called him Dad. <laughs> uh, it's a forbidden, slow burn, age gap romance, standalone. Oh my god. E like, check, 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 check. Yep. Yep. Checked all yep. of the boxes. I know. Same. Did you also rate it a five? Oh, yes. That was the easiest five I think I've ever given anything ever. It, I mean, I knew it going into it because Jennifer Hartman, every book that I've read by her so far, 
has been five stars. Like it's, she has an incredible way of bringing characters to life on page and just making you absolutely heart sick for everybody. I need to read more of her. Oh my God. Yeah. You really do. I mean that, I don't know if I would even say that it was her best book. And that's saying something because I loved this book. I mean, five stars. Like, Reed? Love him. Reed, like how protective he is. Um, What happened outside of the rink? Happened outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like. Oh, shit. Yeah. All, just all of that like oh, oh and I love how he looks at her as a woman and not a teenager yeah yeah like we need to specify that when they meet she is 17 it is a meeting that he is unaware of her age she's very obviously yeah. portraying herself as older so we'll we'll put that out there right now um yeah Nothing actually happens. He is a complete gentleman until she is older. (laughs) Thus the name. (laughs) So, yeah, I just wanted to to really state that because I I don't want people thinking that we're here, like, praising up. Condoning. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. We are not. We are not. We are not. No. But, like, oh, the connection Oh, he's yeah. amazing. Um, I have to say, too, that I really liked Whitney's character, uh, Tara's mom. You know what? Same. So wise, so mature, just... Yeah. Oh, I absolutely love that. Ugh. I want to read it again. <laughs> yep. Ah. Oh. Yep. I loved how flawed the characters were. Because it just felt real. Like, it just really yeah. gave an authenticity to all of the characters. Like, Tara's, um, like, her reaction to Reed spending more time around the family. Like, how she was really, like, I think my parents are going to get back together. Like, that was her mindset on it, right? Of course you would think that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was just so realistic. <sighs> and just... And I liked, normally, like, I'm not big on the, um, I don't know, like, the angsty side of of it all, but um, her reaction to, like, when she finds out, yeah. Like, I think that was a pretty, pretty good reaction, I think, in yeah. reality, you know. In reality. But also, I know we specified this when i was talking about it on the last episode that we didn't post but anyway um, (laughs) it's on facebook it's on facebook um read the triggers because it does actively talk about abuse and and addiction and addiction like yeah um, Yeah. on screen make your belly feel anxious for the characters yeah so um another thing if your favorite decade like me is the 90s (laughs) you will love it (laughs) everything from the music to the description of their clothes to the freaking beanie babies i was just uh, oh yeah it made me very nostalgic and and I know I mentioned this the last time, and I think it might have been on the podcast, the the live that we did. Maybe not. Maybe it was just to you. But um, Skeet Ulrich is Reed in my head. Oh, yeah. You, you told me that. Yeah. Yeah. I can see yeah. that. Mm. Oh, my God. Yeah. We are going to end up talking about this book more than our featured read. <laughs> yeah. We should have just had this as our featured, honestly. Uh, yeah, honestly, yeah. Also, it says that it's a slow burn, but mm. 
that first scene, it was at like 7%. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it gives you just enough and it's like, hey, here's a little taste of what. Yeah. Yeah. Here's She's a taste. so good at writing. Oh. Those scenes. my word. <laughs> oh my word. Yep. Mm. Yep. Okay. I'm going to have to read it again. Yep. <laughs> okay, let's move on because we've, yes. we've, yeah. Yep. Just read it. Just listen to us and read it. <laughs> um, The other book that I read besides the featured read was The Things We Leave Unfinished by Rebecca Yaros. So I said before that I'm on like a Rebecca Yaros binge. I've been reading yes. a lot of her contemporary romance books. So this one, and I think, again, I might have talked about it in the live because I may have been currently reading it. I think you were, yeah. Yeah. It's a contemporary romance, but it's also a historical romance because it's dual timeline and dual POV. Oh, yes. We, we love, love that. Love. Yes. So this is 448 pages. I listened to the audiobook for this, which was done so, so well. The narrators were just on point oh like there's so many parts that just gave me goosebumps because it was just like i don't know voice acted so well uh, i'll read the description for those that don't remember it from the live 28 year old georgia stanton has a start over after she gave up almost everything in a brutal divorce the new york house the friends and her pride now back home at her late great-grandmother's estate in Colorado, she finds herself face-to-face -face with Noah Harrison, the best-selling author of a million books where the cover is always people nearly kissing. He's just as arrogant in person as in interviews, and she'll be damned if the good-looking writer of love stories thinks he's the one to finish her grandmother's final novel, even if the publisher swears he's the perfect fit. Noah is at the pinnacle of his career, with book and movie deals galore, there isn't much the golden boy of modern fiction hasn't accomplished, but he can't walk away from what might be the best book of the century, the one his idol, Scarlett Stanton, left unfinished. Coming up with a fitting ending for the legendary author is one thing, but dealing with her beautiful, stubborn, cynical great-granddaughter Georgia is quite another. But as they read Scarlett's words in both the manuscript and her box of letters, they start to realize why Scarlett never finished the book. It's based on her real-life romance with a World War II pilot, and the ending isn't a happy one. Georgia knows all too well that love never works out, and while the chemistry and connection between her and Noah is undeniable, she's as determined as ever to learn from her great-grandmother's mistakes, even if it means destroying Noah's career. <sighs> so this was Damn. like a double romance, because you got the... Uh, romance that's budding between Georgia and Noah, which was really well done. Like, like you can tell, like he was like so smitten with her right from the start. Like you could tell that she is absolutely rotted that he's the one that was picked to carry mm -hmm. on her great grandmother's novel who she was really close with. Um, and then you also have the romance of Scarlet and the World War II pilot. Mm -hmm. So you get those two romances, like, side by wow. side. It was alternating between the current timeline and as they were finding letters and parts of, like, the manuscript, their romance in the past. Um, which was absolutely heart-wrenching. I mean, mm, I being bet. around the time of World War II... Um, yeah, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It took me a while to, to listen to it because, um, again, I mean, it was a long audiobook anyways, but, um, I just kind of kept going towards other books before going back mm -hmm. to that one. So there were times that like, it just didn't really grasp me that I got distracted by other books so I did rate it a four because of that. I mean, that's literally the only reason why Dr. Star was just, just personal. That me uh, and my, yeah, me and my, I don't know, ADHD brain just could not stay focused on it. So again, I don't even know if it's fair for me to drop it down to a four star because that is entirely a me problem. But 
Uh, still, like, a really sad book. I was washing dishes and I was crying when it got <laughs> to certain parts. <laughs> I swear, it's just the bubbles getting in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, not her saddest. I still think uh, the last letter was her saddest. Mm. So this one is a little remember? on the safer side, I think. Then okay. the last letter. The last letter will destroy you from start to finish. I don't know if so I'm if going you're listen, if you're looking for a book to give you like a really good cry, then yes, pick up the last letter okay. because you will be sobbing. No, absolutely wrecked. But anyways, back to the things we leave unfinished. Um, highly recommend it. Anyways, it was really good. Uh, so the Duke and I. Do you want to do the honors? Uh, sure. <laughs> Love. Okay. So our featured read for this month was The Duke and I by Julia Quinn, which is the Bridgerton series. Number one. Number one. Um, number one. I feel like there's not really going to be any spoilers, hey? I think this book has been out long enough and the series, the Netflix series, I think we're safe in what we say. Okay. I mean, so I guess just a means, heads up. Yeah. Just a heads up. If yeah. you don't want to hear about what we're going to say, but at the same time, like there's not going to be a whole lot of spoilers, but I don't think anyway, so. If you don't want to, yeah. If you don't want to take a chance, you can farewell now. Um, okay. So, this is 433 pages with hmm. the second epilogue included. Okay, yeah. I forgot yep. about that part. Yeah. It is a historical romance. Side note. Just a little pin here. Um, did you notice that this book is almost 25 years old? This book was released January 5th, 2000. Whoa. Whoa. I did. Whoa. I did not know that. Yeah. That's like mind blowing. <laughs> Carry on. You just blew my mind. <laughs> Whiplash. God. Okay. Synopsis. The Duke and I is a romance set in the Regency era. In the ballrooms and drawing rooms of Regency London, rules abound. From their earliest days, children of aristocrats learn how to address an earl and curtsy before a prince, while other dictates of the ton are unspoken yet universally understood. A proper duke should be imperious and aloof. A young, marriageable lady should be amiable but not too amiable. Daphne Bridgerton has always failed at the latter. The fourth of eight siblings in her close-knit family, she has formed friendships with the most eligible young men in London. Everyone likes Daphne for her kindness and wit, but no one truly desires her. She is simply too deuced honest for that, too unwilling to play the romantic games that captivate gentlemen. Amiability is not a characteristic shared by Simon Bassett, Duke of Hastings. Recently returned to England from abroad, he intends to shun both marriage and society, just as his callous father shunned Simon throughout his painful childhood. Yet an encounter with his best friend's sister offers another option. If Daphne agrees to a fake courtship, Simon can deter the mamas who parade their daughters before him. Daphne, meanwhile, will see her prospects and her reputation soar. The plan works like a charm at first, but amid the glittering, gossipy, cutthroat world of London's elite, there is only one certainty. Love ignores every rule. Like, I wish, I wish I could have read this before watching Bridgerton. I yeah. absolutely love that show, but... I wish I could have read this first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I obviously went into this book picturing everything 
spot on to the TV show, which is amazing. They do it's really well. The TV, the TV yeah. show is like scene for scene. Exactly the same. So can you imagine reading Bridgerton first and then getting a show and that freaking it. amazing? Yeah. I'm jealous of everybody that read it prior. <laughs> yep. Um, but like best friend's sister. Uh-huh. Enemies to lovers, basically. Yeah. Um fake dating. Mm-hmm. Like, Force proximity. Check, check, check. Force pro oh. Duel to check, the death. Check, check. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Uh, oh, oh my God. So I went back and forth actually with audiobook and reading this. Okay. Um. I okay. I liked the audio, like the narrator's voice. Mm-hmm. But I kind of wish there was somebody else narrating the characters. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. You know, I I, just... I listened strictly, like just audiobook. Is how I I read it. So she yeah. did do a uh, good job, though. Yeah, and I found that between um, more so Violet, Daphne's mother, but also with mm-hmm. Daphne, like she was so spot on to the actors in the show. Like I almost thought that they just took clips of the show. <laughs> like yeah. it was just exactly how i remembered violet and daphne sounding in the show i don't know how she did it so that right there too is like the show absolutely killed it with finding characters to perfectly match the characters from the book i yeah 100 percent. i went into this book picturing the show and it Definitely didn't disappoint. I think Simon was described differently than what his actor was. I, I did notice a Only couple a things bit. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, but even that wasn't wasn't a big deal at all because his no. like the descriptions of the characters weren't a big part of the entire story. So it's not like it was constantly, no. you know. So it was it was good in that sense that you could still picture it. Um, yeah, I really liked Lady Whistledown's, like, I, part of me was kind of afraid that the Lady Whistledown's, um, like, in the show, the way that it's wrote, the way that it's so, like, almost conniving a little, it's very gossipy, I was kind of afraid that that was, like, a more modern thing that... Netflix did to the series so going in to read it and knowing that every chapter started out with that and I just had such a hoot reading those like they were so comical and witty and I was just like yeah like that was so well done amazing yeah oh oh loved it and like the biggest thing that I liked with the difference between the book and the tv show is like with the book you got their internal thoughts yes you know what i mean like i liked more getting so more of thinking. simon getting yeah. simon's internal dialogue was game changer i think um i think we need to talk about what happens when because in the show i felt like they'd done it a little more not subtly but different than in the book but the book's version of what happens with Daphne and Simon, their wedding night, not, not their wedding night. Um, when they, when she forces him to, yeah. Right. In her. Yeah. Yeah. I felt that was, and I don't know if it's because again, this book is 25 years old, but it did not sit right with me. I lost a lot of respect or like i did not like daphne after that like that really put a sour taste in my mouth yeah i completely agree like i don't remember it being that bad in the show so i think that they did alter it i'd have to watch it again to to really know but um but yeah i just did not like that part i think that's why i like i rate it like three and a half stars 
I rated it at four. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty close to four. Like, maybe I will consider it a four because the spicy scenes were pretty good. Like, I wasn't expecting that. <sighs> Delicious. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And just, I don't know, like, the... Yeah. Especially the part where when they go out into the, like, they're alone mm-hmm. and Anthony finds them. Like, that part, just, like, the, oh, the thrill of it was just so, oh, my God. <laughs> I, I just found, like, I knew what was coming. You know what I mean? Like, I just kept reading faster and faster and faster because I wanted to, like, I knew what was coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I... I did go right into the second book. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't not. Okay. So, I've been thinking about starting the second book, actually. I mean, Anthony's my favorite, so. I know. I was very excited <laughs> to start this one. <laughs> and, like, that second season is my favorite season. So, like, Same. I, I want to read it. Yeah. Because I know damn well it's going to be spicy. Fire. <laughs> Yeah, I'd still, like, I still think even 24, li- 24 hours, <laughs> 24 years later, uh, other than that scene with Daphne and Simon, I think the book really holds up. Yeah. Like I said, I was, I yeah, was surprised definitely. by how much, like, comedy, banter, just, mm. yeah, I, I am a fan, I have to say. Yeah. I do really enjoy it. Um, One of the things that... I found myself, like, I literally, like, laughed out loud at was <laughs> when Whistledown says, a duel, a duel, a duel. Is there anything more exciting, more romantic, or more utterly moronic? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Oh, God. Okay, well, I guess that uh, clues up our episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sure does. Don't forget sure to does. hop over to Instagram and, like, our page i'm really sorry you guys are gonna hear my dog in the background (laughs) but yeah uh instagram we're at my sister's tbr give us a like (laughs) luna's telling you to go like our page (laughs) exactly (laughs) and follow and rate us on whatever platform you are listening to us on right now please that's what gets us new listeners and you don't want to miss out on uh, us gushing over the next books. Nope, definitely not. Uh, I guess we could let them know now that our next feature read yeah. will be... Dear John by Nicholas, by Sparks. Nicholas Sparks. Of course we have to do a Nicholas Sparks book. I mean, it's been yeah. a year since he reposted our from our Instagram page, your lovely collection. So, I mean, it was just fitting that we had to. <gasps> Luna. Yeah. Well that we deserved. Just... Yes. So we will be reading Dear John. So if anybody is reading it, be sure to send us a message or a comment on Instagram and let us know what you think of the novel. I am also excited to compare novel to screen adaptation. Uh, we can maybe yes, do a so... watch party. <gasps> Done. Done. all right see you later until next time toodles Uh, bye bye